Hey you. Subscribe. You're watching Radio Free Cybertron. Hosted by Brian Kilby with J.D. Church, John DeLuna, XV, Amy Morgan, and Rob Clay. For the latest Transformer news, reviews, and more, visit Keyformers.com. Hi there. This is Radio Free Cybertron episode 346, and I'm your host, Brian Kilby. You'll notice that I'm flying solo this week. Uh, you know, I was kind of sick earlier on in the week. We actually... Didn't put the show on like normal, I know I suck. But, you know, here we are, getting the podcast version out for you. So, if you missed the live show, we've got all the news, all the segments, all the stuff that you expect each and every week right here. Um, the guys are, eh, well, they'll be back next week. Uh, we couldn't work out a good time for everyone to get together, so I am just presenting the show to you. I, I guess presenter is the proper British way of describing what I actually do, or, you know, sodding myself. I guess you could probably also say that. Hey, uh, so uh, on the show this week, we have uh, the news. We have This Week in History, comic news from Amy Morgan, uh, and we also have um, Q&A with Rob Springer, and, 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 as a bonus, because I have so much great content in our library. We have a segment from uh, February 2011 uh, that uh, we discuss uh, Transformers Media, all the old classic crews there, and uh, I thought that that might be fun to uh, use this week. So let's go ahead and um, jump to This Week in History. Oh man, 1969, Wankus was born. Wankus was the uh, voice of, um, he, he was Prowl, I think. He was Prowl in Robots in Disguise. And um, yeah, Prowl. 100% certain, Prowl. Uh, the reason I, I don't really, a lot of times when we think about voice actors, we really think more about their character. I, I can't help but just think of how crazy Wankus was at that point. He was this uh, sex radio shock jock. Um, just really, really, really raunchy, uh, X-rated stuff. And um, he was pretty awesome. He actually went to BotCon 02, uh, I think. Uh, one that I missed. And um, apparently... Everyone said that he was awesome. Uh, since then, though, he has become a born-again Christian, and um, he has uh, failed to respond to my emails. So, uh, <laughs> we really wanted to have Wankus on. He and I actually had uh, an exchange going probably, I don't know, about five years ago about uh, appearing on the show. Uh, it kind of trailed off, and I haven't heard from him in a while. I think he probably wants to forget his wilder days, and honestly, that's what we would really want to focus on. Oh, well. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump to the news. So, uh, Transformers 4, Age of Extinction, uh, we have a new image of uh, the leader class Optimus, and, um, yeah, we sure do. It, it's, um, if it wasn't a leader class figure, it might actually look pretty uh, decent. Um, it's chromed out and such, but let's uh, scale this out here just a bit. It's so simplistic. It makes me sad. And for scale, it's there beside of a pack of Chinese cigarettes. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, so um, Age of Extinction, Optimus Prime, Supreme Class figure. The figure is so simplistic, it's kind of hard to get a, an actual reading on what the character will look like. Uh, of course, it does look different than... Um, the original trilogy, Optimus, who uh, basically is pretty stagnant across the three movies. He looked a little different, I guess, but this is uh, an even uh, bigger uh, change from the previous design a little bit. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not really crazy about it, and I'm really not looking forward to all of these simplified figures that we're getting with, um, well, with the future. Hopefully, uh, Generations will not be as simplified as the movie line, but... We'll pretty much have to uh, wait and see. Um, also in the news this week, uh, Masterpiece, uh, Will Jack, uh, he will have an anti-hypnosis device bonus. Uh, that's pretty sweet. Um, 
that's I guess a <clears throat> retailer incentive. Um, <clears throat> actually, also newsflash, we have prototype images of masterpiece Will Jack. Uh, they're not color. It's kind of hard to tell exactly how he'll look, but it doesn't look bad. Uh, I, I certainly will pick it up. I'm very fond, of course, of Will Jack. He is a he, he's a very classic Generation One character, uh, but. Um, He's not my favorite. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to, I don't know, Mirage. If we can ever get a Masterpiece Mirage, I think my life will pretty much be complete. Uh, let's see here. Uh, also in the news this week, running through this pretty quickly, um, we have... Now, this was cool. Um, I don't know that this has been confirmed yet, but uh, it certainly looks legit. We have some low-res images of upcoming uh, Generations figures including our favorite detective night beat, uh, Jaxus, uh, who, um, I can't say Jaxus without thinking of my favorite fanfic, Ravage Three Bodies Evolution, uh, written by Tiger Magnetron. Jaxus, how is it that you live? I thought you died in the TF Generation comics, num <laughs> two number 11. I love that. And, uh, Windblade. So, uh, she looks nice. Uh, but of course she's a drawing. <laughs> But uh, the Starscream mold for um, animated Starscream mold for Jaxus is pretty inspired, and uh, another reuse of the uh, Jazz mold uh, for Nightbeat. Um, we'll see. Uh, the, I I think that mold is probably it's probably not too degraded at this point, but it's been used. It's been beaten to death. Um, so, but I know XV loves that mold, so he probably isn't complaining about this. I am really, though, looking forward to that Jaxus figure and, uh, of course, the Starscream, and, uh, Armada Starscream that that's going to be based on. Um, so I've already shared my slight dissatisfaction with um, the look of uh, the Transformers Go, uh, Triple Changing Optimus Prime. We have new photos of that and um, still, still pretty dissatisfied with this. Uh, it gives off a vibe. Being an old timer, someone who's been in the fandom for a while, I think back to a lot of the um, photos I would see from figures that were released in Japan in the late '90s. Stuff uh, from Beast Wars Second and Neo, and sometimes I would just wonder why, why, why. I mean, one figure that I remember just having that just like why look when I saw it was Long Rack. Uh, but I ended up loving Long Rack from, um, Long Rack was Neo. Uh, it was a great figure. Uh, it looked really nice. It was different. It had a different, uh, design aesthetic than anything that we got here. Um, Optimus Prime does as well, but I don't think it's going to be to its benefit. He, I see a lot of panels on this figure. Um, it looks like it's going to be a panel former, and, uh, I'm just really, really not looking forward, forward to it, honestly. Here he is in, uh, vehicle mode. Um... Yeah, that sure is. It looks like we have Roller there, um, but I honestly, I thank God I'm not a completist. I have I feel no urge to buy this, um, but I am looking forward to seeing it at a, at a convention or somewhere, or if somebody I know buys it. Chris Triplett, you should buy this so I can make fun of you. Um, And let's see here. Last up in the news, um, we have... More news in the sense that we have a longer range to look at, but we have less news in the sense that less really interested me this week. Uh, we have new images of Transmutate from uh, the Transformers Collectors Club. Uh, and, of course, uh, that was going to be based on RC from, uh, I guess, the Robots in Disguise RC from um, Transformers Prime. Uh, here is the vehicle mode and. I can't actually wait to see it in robot mode. I, I didn't hate this idea. Uh, some people did. Um, but Transmutate is a motorcycle. Yeah, that, that, that really happened. That really happened. So let's see, uh, let's see what happens when this actually comes out. Um, can't wait to get my hands on it for good or for ill. Um, but really, you know, it's, um, it certainly is what it is. So, uh, right now we're going to go ahead and jump to comic news with Amy Morgan. After that, we will have our uh, Q&A with Rob Springer. And uh, after that, we will jump to our conversation from 2011 on uh, the Aligned Universe and Transformers Media in general. So, uh, we will be back 
after this. It's now time for Comic News with Amy Morgan. Hello, Transformers fans. I am back after a long vacation, it seems, um, uh, to do another news bit for uh, T-Formers and Radio Free Cybertron. So, um, out, I, I've got a... Over the, the break, I got a nice shiny new computer and I've got a chance to finally sit down and, and do a thing. There's a lot of stuff that, of course, I've missed since I haven't done a video for a while. So I think I'm going to have to kind of do a run over of everything that's been out in the last month just to kind of set the beginning of 2014 just in the right direction. So um, right now I've kicked everybody out of the kids room and because the very the quietest place right now um I could just do a video here so anyhow um out this week we got more than meets the eye issue number 25 which is also dark cybertron um chapter six we also had the monstrosity motion comic issue number eight uh which is available out this week as well Regeneration One had their third trade paperback also available to purchase this week. So, but like I said, since I haven't made a video in some time, I thought that I would do a really quick rundown of all of the trades that are out um, so that if you haven't bought them, you can, you know, put them on your list or possibly with, if you have any of that Christmas money left over, you can go and buy them. So, some of these will, of course, have been out for a while, but I thought, you know, at least we're up to this point. Let's go ahead and put it in here. So More Than Meets the Eye, Volume 5 trade is out. We haven't had a 6 yet uh, announced, or so that you can't pre-order it yet. But uh, in addition, Robots in Disguise Volume 5 is also out as well. So those are the two main ongoings if you've the, all of the volumes up to that point are all available. So if you're interested, you want to jump on board, now is a really great time to do it. Uh, Beast Hunters issue 8 wrapped up the series last month, but volume 2 will not be out until March. Um, the Monstrosity Trade was also released in December, so if you haven't had a chance to get that, um, the complete monstrosity trade is available. Now I did say that the motion comic issue eight was earlier. So motion in print has not happened yet. So <laughs> um, retribution. Now I know this is not a comic, but it is a written story. It's fiction. And so I thought I would just throw it in here. Retribution will be Transformers Retribution, which is the third volume in the exodus exiles now we're gonna get retribution uh that will be released january 28th this month uh, uh the covenant of primus has also been released i've got my nice cool awesome copy um i know it's been a couple weeks so a lot of people got it a lot of pictures are circulate circulating around the internet you can definitely find um pictures of it and of course it's got a lot of reading material in there and I haven't gone through all of it unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the Art of Prime, the art book, is also been released as well and it's nice. I like what Jim Sorensen did with this one so and that pretty much wraps up all that is available. Speaking of Jim Sorensen, um, he Amazon has put out a new book that Jim and Bill Forrester is working, they're working on. Uh, it's called Transformers Legacy, a celebration of Transformers package art. Um, and it says it, it collects hundreds of beautifully airbrushed paintings from the iconic first decade of the Transformers. Hasbro, Takara, and private collectors who opened their archives yielded 
a unparalleled level of quality. Essays and interviews from the original illustrators give unprecedented insight into the process behind the art and tons of extras and much, much more. It's uh, says that it's 300 pages and it is up for pre-order. Yeah, good times. Lots of art being lavished uh, upon the fandom right now. So speaking of pre-orders, uh, there is also a pre-order up on Amazon for Dark Cybertron Volume 1, which is slotted to be out in April, which is after Dark Cybertron has wrapped up. Uh, Regeneration 1 will also have Volume 4 to be released in May. Um, also, More Than Meets the Eye, volume number one, and Robots in Disguise, volume number one, have all, have both gotten a reissue, second printing release, um, with new art covers by Livio Ramondelli. So if you haven't gotten these volumes yet, you will get new pretty covers by Livio. Uh, this week, today, in fact, IDW Publishing Twitter uh, feed has been um, teasing images, um, what's to come after Dark Cybertron. Now, those of you who have the chance to see the full versions online, uh, you can go to tformers.com and check them out, or at IDW Publishing, which is the Twitter. Um, the first image was of Optimus Prime, I mean, Orion Pax. The art seems to be, from what I, from what I gather, um, by Casey Collar. And I'm guessing that it's also colored by Joanna LaFuente. The second is of fan-made Windblade, also by uh, Casey and Joanna. Um, just teasing things of what's going on, which... Brings me to my next bit of news. Um, on Christmas Day, uh, the 2014 IDW sneak peek preview was released, and within we got our first tease of Windblade uh, featuring in this year's comics. So it was pretty exciting, right? And a cover teasing a new series written by Margaret Scott. Now it says, on this page, it says, Who is Windblade? In the aftermath of Dark Cybertron, uh, Windblade takes the planet by storm, and Starscream's not happy about her being there. But where did she come from, and what does her secret mean to the future of Transformers? A powerful new chapter in the Transformers saga begins here, April 2014. And scrolled across the top, where usually more than meets the eye or robots in disguise would be, is the dawn of of the Autobots. Now since then, we've gotten a few more details from Merigrid. Uh, artist duties will be by Sarah Stone. Uh, there is no official news on how long it will run, but supposedly it'll be four issues, and potentially become an ongoing if the series does well. Merigrid writes, We've got a four-issue miniseries that everyone is praying will become an ongoing, but like every other comic, we have to prove ourselves from issue one. That means we need pre-orders and a lot of them. Not I'll pick it up when, I, when I'm at my shop. Not I'll borrow it from a friend. If you want Windblade to keep going, the only way to do that is to get your store to pre-order it. If you don't have a shop, you can buy it on Comixology or a similar app. And then she also suggested in another blog that you can pre-order from some online comic shops to get a physical cop to get a physical copy like thingsfromanotherworld.com, which is also TFA TFAW.com, uh, Westfieldcomics.com, or MidtownComics.com. Um, and I will of course put links everywhere. So so there you have it. A new series to follow out of Dark Cybertron. And, of course, the ongoings that will start right back up um, once Dark Cybertron is over with. So, yeah. Also, the 2014 preview mentioned that the Transformers Age of Extinction comics will be published in June 2014. Um, which kind of was a surprise to me because I didn't think that they were going to put one out this year. Um, especially since last year, the Amazon 
reveals of those kind of spoiled the heck out of the movie. And I, I remember a Michael Bay being pretty not happy about that. <laughs> um, more news bits, of course, because that just keeps on coming. Um, Robert Atkins, an artist who did cover work on IDW's Re Regeneration 1 issue 100 and G.I. Joe, a real American hero issue 200, put pencils on his blog at robertatkinsart.blogspot.com. And these are said to be re retailer incentive covers. So if anybody's interested, uh, go check those out. Um, if you are interested in the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover series debuting this year by Barbara and Scully, uh, you may want to pop online and check out a recent interview by Newsarama. Uh, it gives details on how the crossover came to be and that this will be its own continuities. So it's not going to affect anything in the current continuity. And I was like, oh. Sweet! That's great! Awesome! Um, the first issue of this crossover will be available on Free Comic Book Day, and more details, again, on that are online at toynewsinternational.com, which is toynewssi, ah, toynewsi.com. So, yeah. And lastly, we have art teases from Phil Jimenez, his Twitter account. Um, he has given us the final subscription cover of Dark Cybertron issue number 12. Uh, he, it says, what happens when Megatron and Shockwave duke it out? Well, the, this cover is a result. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that, you can find it online at his Twitter. Um, and that is pretty much everything for the news this week. Um, Definitely follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Lady of Wreck. Uh, there was a lot of little things that came out that just you had 24 hours to to participate. There was an issue, a Dark Cybertron issue number one, that was for a dollar at Comixology. And sometimes I can't, you know, you you try to make a video and you've got 24 hours to do it, and it just doesn't happen. So. Um, if you are not online or on Facebook, you're really missing out on a lot of uh, up-to-date news bits. So definitely follow me on Twitter, and um, I can get out that stuff as soon as I find out about it. Sometimes I don't, but I do most of the time have a really good track record. <laughs> so um, that being said, we'll see you online, and of course, Happy New Year and more videos to come in 2014. You boys a bit bored? Snap me to it! Snap me to a Slim Jim! Hey guys, it's Rob. And this week's question comes from Sean Starlipper. I hope I'm saying your last name right, dude. I have a question for you guys. Do Minicons grow when in alt mode? What I'm saying is, a Minicon helicopter the same size as any other TF helicopter when it's transformed? I know this doesn't come across in toy form, but if they were in a were in cartoon or comic form, I always pictured mini cons like Soundwave or G1 Megatron in reverse instead of getting small in alt mode. Mini cons get big, then get small in robot mode. Water go down the hole. Um, <laughs> uh, Sean, thanks for your question. Um, in short, no, they 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 stay small. Or at least in all depictions so far they have. Um, basically, yeah. Uh, now, someone could depict them becoming a normal-sized vehicle or what have you when they get big. And, and, honest, and honestly, um, the, uh, I want to say Street Protection Team, I think that's their name, Highwire, Grindor, and Sure Shock from Armada, they turn into uh, life-sized vehicles when they transformed. Admittedly, they turned into a skateboard, a bicycle, and a scooter, so they turned into vehicles that are small by default. Um, but no, Minicons stay pretty small uh, so far in the cartoons, hence the name Mini. Now, that's not saying they couldn't, it's just, you know, thinking about it, I want to say Highwire, or was he Highwire, the helicopter guy, in Cybertron. I think Bud flew around in him a little, but I still don't think he was a large helicopter like, say, 
uh, evac was. I think he was just kind of whirly bird sized. That's a thing. But no, for the most part, they're pretty small. Uh, they're still small compared to the others. So small that I think the fact that they turn into realistic earthen alt modes is mainly for novelty than anything else, because, you know, you know, the whole they're in the skies thing has always been with a really big grain of salt, because, let's face it, they're toys, and it's not realistic. Um, because, sure, a semi or a Volkswagen going down the road is probably not going to... Well, uh, nowadays, a Volkswagen be like, man, that thing's still running? But, uh, <laughs> or a Camaro, or what hell, I see them all the time. One of, my, one of the guys at work has a, a Bumblebee Camaro. Um, you know, it wouldn't be too out of the way to see a car like that. But, like, a F1 racer, an Indy racer, goes driving down the roads, no one's going to bat an eye. Oh, there's a jet just flying a few feet above my house. How's my house not tearing up in the air to stir? How's the sonic boom not deafening me? <laughs> you know, um, stuff like that. How is Blitzwing capable of flight? Because he was just a tank, and now he turned into a plane. And that should be the most heaviest plane, I think my point said. Why is Astro Train getting beaten because a space shuttle is huge and any turn he should be like impervious to like missiles they should just bounce off me should be that he should be really slow <laughs> you know that's that's you know wow there's like a rocket base with a train that doesn't even look like a real train right here in the middle of the woods you know who's going to befall for those disguises no one not to mention how did they know it was Optimus Prime and the Autobots? Well, they have symbols in their names on them. Just going up and down the street. There goes a Ferrari with a big old Autobot symbol on it. I don't think that's them. <laughs> even though they had, like, uh, drivers, even back in the... Uh, I heard someone once, uh, not too long ago, say Holoforms is recently a new thing in Transformers. But no, they had uh, mannequins in the uh, Marvel comics that pop up. And be like, well, it's okay, guys. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, that Lamborghini is being driven by businessmen. It's okay. It is okay. It's really, it's a normal thing to see an army truck just go by. So with the minicons, it's like, hey, guys, it's just a tiny little truck. It's just an RC truck driving in traffic. Nothing to... Ugh. Weaving in between cars in a hurry. We should find that kid and tell him to cut it out who's driving that little car. It's a... Dude, there's a Power Wheels coming this way. I mean, it's a... With a, with a, with a mannequin or holoform driver driving this Power Wheels. You think that's a robot from our space? Nah, nah. It's normal. What I'm saying is, um... Even minicons in their tiny little vehicles still take a sh kind of a turn the brain off bit of thinking to make work you, you listen to me over there who I'm <laughs> my hands pointing at you hear me Metro Plex? yeah I need to do some cleaning up so Metroplex has been sitting in my computer chair <coughs> trying to figure out what I'm going to do with them I need to put stickers on for those of you listening to the audio, audio version there's a Metroplex sitting behind me yeah. Cowabunga. I'm rambling. So, Sean, I hope I answered your question. If not, I hope I entertained you. But basically, they stay tiny. Uh, so far, they stay small in all depicted fiction. Things could change. Because for some reason, in some cartoons, the Transformers are freaking gigantic. And I'm like, you know what? A Camaro just isn't that big. <laughs> Even unfolded it but like how it would. It. Yeah. I mean, I could stand on the ladder and probably look Bumblebee in the eye. He shouldn't be a skyscraper. Starscream should be huge. 
minicons are about our size. And in vehicle form, they're, they're basically about the size of power wheels, uh, judging by fictional representations. I mean, you know, they're not huge. Though it would be kind of crazy if all of a sudden you're like, man, look at that giant son of a bitch turn that little thing, and he's running for his life. Why is he running for his life? He should be, like, bulletproof how thick he is. It's not reality, man. It's a fiction designed to sell a toy line, and we all fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Um, so, yeah, I rambled. So, uh, thanks for your question, Sean. And if you got any others, and that goes to everyone listening or watching, you got any questions, please send them my way, rob at tfradio.net, or you can, um, tfradio.net, period. There's all our various ways to contact us, social media. Anyway, good, you know. You can ask me on Facebook, you know, and that'll work. Uh, actually, that's how I get most of the questions, so whatever's clever. Um, I'm sucking on my teeth. I have this kind of crooked one here, where I like did a face plant several years ago. I passed out, and it's been kind of crooked since. Uh, every time I look at this thing, I'm like, damn, is that thing broken? Oh, no, it's just crooked still, right? Maybe I get that straightened out one day. <laughs> Just suck with staring at it when I'm making these videos. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of fapid today. My mind's on other things. Um, oh yeah, my blog's uh, rubblerobspringer.tumblr.com. Uh, if you want to look at that too, and hey, let's see what those guys are up to. Right now, I bet Sona said they like something, and Donna said, Why do you like that? And then they busted out the swords, because they're gangsta. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Later. You can hear our show on Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your iPhone, Android phone, BlackBerry, or Palm phones on demand and on the go. Don't have Stitcher? Download it for free today at Stitcher.com or in the app stores. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. I'm a terrible Transformers fan or a good Transformers fan because I've watched three episodes of Cybertron, two episodes of Energon, and I watched two-thirds of Armada before giving up. So I watched none, so don't even worry about it. That's awesome. Okay. I'll um I'll cr I'll correct myself. I can understand anime sound wave a lot better than a war for Cybertron where I'm like, why did he just say? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you mentioned War for Cybertron, Rob, because War for Cybertron falls in with the new cohesive universe that uh, Hasbro is allegedly that Hasbro uh has developed for the um for the Transformers. We've we've got uh what is it so far? We've got Transformers Prime. Uh, we mm -hmm. have War for Cybertron and uh, Exodus, which is the uh, novel. We're getting a sequel to Exodus coming up, and I need to read Exodus first. It's not it on comes Kindle. Comes paper pack in a month. It's not on. Two. It's not on Kindle though, and this is like the uh -oh. only way I read a book is on my Kindle. This was free, by the way. Someone at work gave me this Kindle. I, wow. I, yeah, it was awesome. Why? That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, because because she had another Kindle. It's like I've already got. Oh. I've got a new one. You can have this one. I'm like, okay. Oh, is that the 2G Kindle? It's the 2G Kindle, so it's it's still good. <laughs> 2G Kindle is great, but uh, yeah. so the uh, what are the what, why does Hasbro need a, a, a single continuity like a cohesive universe? And you know, it's easier. It, it, it is easy. it, uh, it, well, it's, it's easier for them to keep track of their own continuity but then. No, they <laughs> don't. Do they care? They why do they need to? They don't keep track of continuity. That's like you, you even have to have for Cybertron, Exodus, and. Prime contradict each other already. How? Uh, go into that, XV. How, how do they contradict each other? By being contradictory. <laughs> it's like searching all spot <laughs> for contradictory. Say no more. But no. Like, <laughs> but no Megatron we, is actually a little girl. In but no, 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 but, no, seriously. seriously though. So it is like G1. <laughs> <laughs> but what are, the what are the advantages of actually having or attempting to have this cohesive universe? What's the, what's the point? The Maybe one of them. Easier for them. What? What do you like mean? Product side. 
I was just going to say, you know? maybe one of them was listening to a fan, and, and, and the fan was ranting about it and said, hmm. Don't, and then they said, well, why haven't we made the continuity more easier don't, for no, us? What, what, for fan, what fans want? Fans want a... I don't know what fans want. They want a, they <laughs> what want I a, want. They want a paint by the fans numbers. Fans don't know what they want either. No, they want a paint by the numbers explanation as ha to how everything works. And it doesn't. Well, and it's worked well, great so far. Get, it. get over it. It's supposed to not work. <laughs> but, well, what makes it good, though, is what makes it make sense is Hasbro now makes their own show. Yeah. They're, they're like, they can't be like, hmm? Oh, the guy over in the writer did. They they have their own show, so it's like, okay, now we're our own media entity, so we've got to be more hands on. But, Not to mention, let's. <clears throat> it just works out end all. It's like, hey. So are they micromanagers? Right. Is that is that what we're saying? Is Hasbro's trying to micromanage the Transformers? I think so, trying to manage it's it. Work out. I, and yeah, I they may have done a poor job are. managing it. Period. In the past, so now they're trying to manage it. It also helps them, frankly gauge what's working and what's not so if they have a thousand divergent stories they don't know what's really clicking and what's not i love your dr pepper hat it's just John. so fragmented you know yeah well, so that way so this way they goes. have a controlled number of characters and storylines and things like that and they'll know what's hitting and missing with their audience so are you saying that, they can do that because they can uh throw metrics around it yeah i mean it I mean, becomes coming easier from the, coming when, from the business I don't know, world maybe, i think it, i think you know, in terms of knows? metrics and you know managing and yeah. analyzing things so is that is that Carl in the chat has a good point that he could be try to make it a more accessible intellectual property, so that way they yeah. can, uh, they have yeah I mean essentially to, they're shrinking it. They have try explaining to, multiverse to anyone, right? They have more to like you know borrow from and things like that. Um, but I don't know, it, you know, the single continuity in a line every year. I mean, that's worked for Power Rangers for how long? XV. Uh, this this is the eighteenth year. Yeah, so I'm that's, old. that's a long time for a single continuity um, since before the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I mean, it was never, a, it was it was like, you know, two, three seasons of that. But after that, it was consistent, right? So it consistently a new one. But I don't, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to uh, sell more books. That way they can, maybe they can start a book publishing, like, that breaks off into the Star Wars you know, expanded universe thing. Or something. I would totally be for that. <laughs> you know, more more fiction. That Transformers really... Transformers don't work in prose. I mean, I know all the fanfic writers out there. Like, I think uh, is that our pal Carl. I'm not actually looking at the chat. Carl Volmer is that who That's it is? Him. Yeah, I, I, I love agree. I love you, Carl. He's there. You know, we've been friends for a, more than a decade. But you know, Transformers don't work in prose. I, I've tried. I don't it. agree. I I, I do. <laughs> I, it just doesn't. It just doesn't. I mean, Transformers, it's a visual, it's a visual experience. You watch them transform. If you know, if you, if someone's writing no, a story, it's like, he, that, he transforms with all his might and he does something awesome. I mean, you know, that just doesn't. And then he drops a carburetor. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something you see. It's something you see. It's not, even, it's not something, it's not even something you imagine. You have to see it. Uh, it's, I, I, I'm all for using your, my imagination. But uh, it's just something that I just don't see Transformers working ever in prose. I mean, well, for people that maybe are not as into like transforming the toys, they they totally would be. I mean, I know that I would. I, I wish that there was more fiction that I could read about it. I, well, for me to get more story and not to watch a like a, a kids TV show, I actually have to pick up comics, and the comics aren't that great either. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the thing is with the prose is it's had, for me, well, for me anyway, it's had its moments that I just can't get enough of and I'll read over and over again. It's just they haven't followed that up so well. I haven't read Exodus yet. When it goes to paperback this summer, I will, but it's like um, Omega Point, all that prose there. I loved it. I can read that still over and over now. Um, another Time, Another Place, uh, stuff alignment. like that. What was yeah. Yeah, alignment. Alignment, that's what I was, I was about to call it Exodus again. That. Those are stuff, I mean, I can just keep reading and I just cannot get enough of. And then it's like, oh hey, Keepers trilogy. I just, I just, it just, it just <laughs> it, it, if the story's about, if the story's about ideas and the story's about, you know, uh, the characters. I mean, why does it have to be about Transformers? It's not like the Transformers have, you know, this. It, uh, I don't want to say. Uh, I don't want to go too far down this, but it's not like the Transformers have this rich, <laughs> this rich narrative history. 
it, it's, it's, it's it's so it's so incredibly it's so incredibly fragmented. The Transformers, I love the Transformers. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Transformers. I've wasted so much time and energy on it, but it's it's so fragmented. It's 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 about it's about a certain couple of character uh, archetypes or you know that it's it's about them transforming that's that's what it's really about it's about the it's about taking a toy and taking it from a car to a robot or a jet to a robot and that just doesn't for me personally come across in 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 text when i'm reading a story you know it can be about optimus prime you know walking around and meeting megatron in in heaven or hell or wherever it is you know they don't it's, it might as well just be jim and bob you know getting together <laughs> it just it just it just seems stilted and disconnected from the 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 transformers characters that we know uh it just it's just it's never worked for me ever. well i like what um carl in the chat room has said here he said transformers just needs a seriously good prose book to blow all pre uh, preconceptions away and i agree with that carl write it <laughs> You're a great writer. Go go to Hasbro yeah. And, yeah. and recommend. It's a real circular argument because yeah. I mean, then you would ask, well, yeah. it, why yeah. hasn't there been one today? There's Just good and there's bad writers. They keep on so getting hard. they keep on getting people that don't know how to write very well. Do it. I mean, Exodus, half of it was good, the other half was crap. It, and, I really like Legends. It's a, it's <laughs> kind of unfortunate that they have to write. That yet. I like it? Find Your Fate Junior. Yeah, I like the <laughs> Oh, Wind Charger killed the Dinobots. It's like, well, crap, I gotta go back to page 12. <laughs> I, di I didn't take my finger off the page. You see that? I didn't take it off. It doesn't count. But you know, if it's not, if for me, if it's not a graphic medium, it, it might as well be, it might as well be Rescue Rangers as Transformers, honestly. So, but, uh, but no. Interesting idea. Yes. We, someone needs to start Rescue Rangers. Uh, Rescue uh, Rangers. Uh, Transformers! <laughs> no, and I, I, I'm, I'm saying this as a person who's r written a lot of Transformers fan fiction. I mean, quite a bit. And I've spent a lot of time doing it. It's just, I, I stopped for for one reason. It's just, it, it's not really, uh, it's not really satisfying, because it's it's really hard to take, you know, your your what Transformers are and tra transfer and transform them and transfer it to something that doesn't really convey that that sort of. Um, you know, kinetic uh, transformation. You know, if I if I imagine Optimus Prime transforming, it, okay, transforms the movie. Uh, that the famous scene where Optimus is plowing through the, the Decepticons, he transforms in midair and you know shoots them and blah blah blah. If you try to if you try to translate translate that to text, I mean, it, it would lose its it would lose its you know punch because it's it's all visual. It's all visual. Maybe it's just because you're a sucky well, let's writer. Be, let's be fair, though. I mean, it, you have to... It's, it's just like anything. The medium is the message. And the medium changes what kind of story you're going to tell. So that I agree with true. your point That's in the sense that you're saying that it, you can't do... You can't necessarily do a really great version of, like, a, the Transformers the movie or something, an action-based movie in prose. You can do some of that, but you can't do all of it. But what you can do in prose is do backstory and character exploration, and you exactly. can do things that you can't do in a visual medium. So a comic book version of Transformers, a book version of Transformers, a movie version of Transformers, those can all be different things, and they're going to give you different aspects of that universe. No, no one or other can is necessarily going to be more valid, other than what you bring to the table. I mean, if... You know, I mean, and and what is actually on the page? So I think the problem is that that makes sense. people are if, people may be trying to recreate the visual aspects of the Transformers in prose, and that's not going to work. Use the, pro, use the prose distorted. to supplement what we already have, not to exactly. Okay, I, I can I can agree with that. I, I I will definitely agree with that. That's that's a good point. But uh, yeah, so but but going back to you know the reason we mentioned that you know Hasbro selling books in in this whole uh, you know. Consolidated universe. I don't see that being a money maker, uh, because it's not. Uh, yeah, exactly. The, the I can tell you right now, it's not. An, an author does not go into writing books to make money. No, not not. Uh, I'm talking about the publisher. Hasbro publishing. Well, even in the publisher, I mean, no one wins in that situation. If the publisher can at least make a little bit, that'd be great. Then why do we still why do we still have authors? Why do why do we still publish books if money is not made? Because because uh. they make they make their their it's in the reprints and it's also in the fact that um, 
there's a demand for it. People still buy books. I mean, it's the same yeah. way. Why are teachers getting paid? For, why are teachers? Yeah. Why are teachers? They teachers with that much money? Teachers, I, I don't... teachers perpetuate because... society. I mean, we you know well, we, we can't we can't exist without education. We can exist without pulp well, fiction. But without you okay. live in North Carolina and you're gonna sit there and tell me that you can't live without education. That's true. Hey, I'm at a good bar. <laughs> There's starving writers and there's people who buy books. And if it's yeah. transfers on it, then people are going to buy it. So, I mean, I, that, that's yeah. not a big stretch. I think for Hasbro, it comes down to the, they want a unified universe because <laughs> it's the, I think it's the vocal minority. You know, they're getting comments and letters from people saying, I don't understand what all this stuff is. Whereas those of us that are generally, you know, either indifferent to it or prefer it, we're not that vocal about it or, or you so, can just do what i do if i don't know it i just go meh exactly and that's what i'm saying <laughs> but the people that don't get it are the ones that are like sending letters to hasbro saying i wish there wasn't all these different shows and these different you know whatever universe so, stuff it'd be easier so, if it was all the same so thing basically aren't these aren't these people instead of saying it's when they're saying i wish there was one cohesive universe aren't they just saying they want one long stretch of g1 Yes. 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 Yeah. They're not going to get that. They're not going to get it. It's dead already. It's over with. But yeah. You know, I, I, I wish I wish we had Transformers Prime or Transformers Animated when I was a kid. It's been so much better. I would be a better. Person that would have been awesome. I just think maybe it's like for a way for a kid to like grow up and say, "Hey, I got this toy," and then he wants if he's interested more in the lot in the toy line and the movies and everything, he can buy this book, which is a supplemental to that. Like it explains the backstories of that film or now, you know, I, kind of breaks into that. I can understand short form books. You know, books that are like. 20 pages of pictures, you know, because there, there's a pretty good ROI on those. Uh, but, you know, 200 pages of text, you know, I, if I was an author, I would, if that represents, you know, uh, God, what, six months of work, I would hope to make at least fifty to $70,000 for that. You know you know what they need to bring back? The uh, Lady Bird audiobooks. Thanks. Yes! With the guy that played Mumra. Yes. <laughs> Megatron. Oh, my God. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, those, Coming those... from a business perspective, books work. Uh, they work. They they do nothing but benefit Hasbro without being a loss to Hasbro. Uh, yeah. Being that the book company licenses it from Hasbro, so they have to pay so many million dollars to get the rights, and then they still have to do what Hasbro wants them to do with what they just paid to be able to do. So Hasbro's already like, how can we expand on this? Oh, we got a book licensing. Well, oh, let's work out something here. And then Hasbro makes money <laughs> off of each product that the book sells. Now, the book is just advertising because it's like some kid might pick it up in the public ad- library, read it. I want to get a Transformer with my allowance this weekend. You know, whatever. And if the licensor uh, screws up, just take the license away. It's a win-win for Hasbro because they're like, that's we're not true. really out of anything. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good point. That's very true. Okay. That's okay. a very good point. Okay. Radio Free Cybertron is teamed up with Kokomo Toys and Collectibles in Kokomo, Indiana. If you're in the Kokomo area, visit our store for a huge selection of new and classic toys. Visit online at www.kokomotoys.com for our address and store hours. While you're there, check out our listing of pre-order items, as well as visit our eBay store. Visit us at www.kokomotoys.com. That's K-O-K-O-M-O-T-O-Y-S.com. We're also on Facebook. So I am back. Uh, I kind of think of that as the classic Justice League version of RFC. It's kind of like the um, the uh, all the old all the old school RFC crew um, trying to do sort of a rotating RFC crew now these days. But back then, we pretty much had the same folks every week, and it was good. I miss those guys. I miss having Rob Springer on. I miss Peter. I haven't spoken to Peter in forever. I think Peter's getting married, or he's already been married. I'm a terrible friend. Uh, sometime we have to get Peter on to see if uh, he can give us an update as to where he is. Uh, so uh, if you have not given us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, I'm not not complaining, but I'm just saying you still have the opportunity. It's very simple, very easy, costs you nothing, and it helps us out tremendously. Uh, we really appreciate everyone who's gone to the effort to do that. If um, Also, actually... Um, 
a sort of a real world conversation here, but I was uh, talking to uh, my friend Jason and Chris, not Chris Triplett from the other podcast, but uh, Chris Staines, who I played D&D with, and he was asking about podcasts, and I'm like, I know a little bit about podcasts, but um, he was wanting to know the best way to listen, and Jason and I both like Stitcher. Uh, Stitcher is this uh, service where uh, you can stream podcasts from the internet on your mobile device or your PC. It has a great library out there. Uh, all of our podcasts are there. Um, it's it's really good, and um, I think that if you uh, check it out, um, you might find it's more more uh, efficient, eh, easier, simpler, less difficult, less hassle way of listening to podcasts. You just stream them. You don't have to download them. It's nice. I like it. You can subscribe. You should subscribe, but. Um, yeah, I just really like Stitcher, and um, it's not it's not my everyday podcast application. Uh, on my uh, on my Android phone, I use Dogcatcher, but I really should just make the jump to Stitcher because I I really do think Stitcher is awesome. They're not paying me a dime to say that. I wish they would, but it's really awesome. It really is. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up. You can follow me on Twitter at bkilby, or you can uh, I guess follow me on Facebook as well. Facebook.com slash Brian Kilby. And of course, we are everywhere on the internet. Uh, we are on Twitter at TF Radio. We are on Facebook, Facebook.com slash TF Radio. Tumblr, t- TF Radio.tumblr.com. YouTube, uh, Pinterest, everywhere. We are pervasive across the internet. So for the guys, I'm your host, Brian Kilby. We will be back next week. Catch us live. I swear to God, we will be live on Wednesday. Uh, let's see here. Wednesday, the 22nd of January. We'll be back. And, of course, uh, on February 15th, we will have the Hasbro event from Toy Fair. It's always our favorite thing each year. I've already got uh, some uh, people lined up to cover that show. We cover the thing all day. Uh, we're going to have people there, and it's going to be awesome. So um, go to tfradio.net on February 15th, and uh, we'll be streaming that thing live. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so uh, again, for the guys, I'm Brian Kilby. We will see you next week. Have a good one. This has been Radio Free Cybertron. Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Watch our live stream at tfradio.net slash live. Join our Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash tfradio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, TF Radio Network. Have a question or comment? Leave it on our Facebook fan page or mail it to contact at tfradio.net. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons license. Any part of this podcast can and should be redistributed, but please, proper attribution is required if you know what's good for you. Jeez, what are these guys ever going to move out of their parents' basements?